Okay, uh, welcome out there, uh, Strength of Materials students. If we've got any customers, let me adjust this uh, camera here. Uh, that's better. Uh oh, there's a glare there. Hmm. Gotta do something about that glare in just a second. Nah. All right, well, that's not that's not too terribly bad. I hope that's bright enough. Yeah, maybe. It's bright over on one side. I guess we can live with it. Well, let's see if there's anybody on board here. Hmm. Nope, nobody. Well, we have 10 minutes before class starts. Oh, hey, there's there's a student, there's Chase. Hey, Chase. Chase is on board. I wonder if I got anybody else. Well, he was on board, now he's gone. Chase was on board, and now he's gone. Yeah, we'll just be patient and wait a minute. I wonder why it's darker on one side than the other, but I think you can read it. Okay. Oh. Hope you all got some sleep last night. Well, we've got eight minutes before class starts. And we're studying uh, strain. And I want to tell you why strain is so important. But I need some students to talk to. So I guess I'll just have to be patient. Okay, I will be patient. I just wonder. <clears throat> where we are in this course. It looks like uh, this is our third week. We're into our third week. Now next week will be our fourth week, okay. Hey, we've got a student, Ben is showing up. Hey, Ben. Hello. Hello. We're starting to get some students showing up now, but Ben, right now it's just you and me, Ben. Uh, I'd like to get to know all my students. Ben, uh, how old are you? 
20. Oh, you're just a young guy. Yeah, I'm a youngin. That is wonderful. I have, I've had students as old as 65. Wow. <laughs> but the, the time to do this is now. And, and to get your degree when you're young like that, that's the time to do it. Where, where are you going to go to the big school? I call it TBU, the big university. Where, where are you going to go from here, Ben? I actually start at OSU next uh, semester. Wow. Still water? Mm -hmm. Neat. Maybe you'll go to a ball game sometime. <laughs> Maybe eventually. Yeah, I've, I've been to some that they have over there at the stadium. They're pretty exciting. They play uh, some pretty big name schools. But so does TU. TU plays some big name schools too. Well, we still have uh, three minutes before class starts. Ben, did, did you have any questions that you wanted to ask me? I was actually looking over the uh, schedule. Yeah. And today's homework says problem chapter two, problem 81, but I can't seem to find that in the book. Oh, okay. So I don't well, know if that was see. typo or. Maybe it's a mistake. Let me see here. This says chapter two, problem 81. That's what it says, all right. Oh gosh, I don't know. Maybe that's a mistake. Uh, hmm. Well, I'm shopping here in the book. That's, that's chapter three there, we don't want that. I don't think it goes to 81, Ben. <laughs> gosh. That's a goof up. Okay, well, it's a, it's a typo, it looks like. Let, let me keep looking here and see what it says here. Okay. Uh, no, it looks like it's Maybe that was page 81, you suppose? Uh, let, let me see what let me see what page 81 is. I bet that's what it is. Yeah, there's a there's a page 81. And I bet that's what it is. So we're, we're going to fix this, just to hang on. I'm so glad you told me. Okay. It looks like we need to change that to problem 221 uh, on page 81. I need to put that in the announcements for those that didn't make, that didn't make the uh, lecture here. But let me write it on the board here, and uh, I'll make a note to myself. And let, let me see when it's due. Uh, it's due, I guess the 11th, huh? No, uh, the 6th. It looks to me like it's due the 6th of uh, September. Yeah, that's when it's due. Hey, we got that uh, sorted out. And, and let me make a note to put it on the, the uh, announcements.
to we, we want to do 221 uh, on page 81. Okay. Thank you, Ben. Let's let's see how we're doing. Uh, we've got uh, oh look at this. We've got Nicholas, Alex, Ashley, Ben, and uh, Braxton, Brian, Chase, How, Jackson, Muhammad. Did I miss anybody? Uh, I think that's it. We we got a good class. Uh, I'll, I'll mute everybody, but you can unmute and talk to me. Did, did anybody else, uh, now Ben brought, brought to my attention that uh, I think I said it was problem 281. There is no problem 281, but there is a problem 221 and it's due on the uh, 6th, which would be what, is that Saturday? Let's see, this is Thursday. Oh, wait a minute, this is the third. I guess that's, sun I guess that's Sunday night. So I'll, I'll put an announcement, but there it is. There's your announcement right there. Anybody out there, unmute and ask me uh, anything you want. Go ahead, I'm listening. Hi, Mr. Griffin. This yeah, is Mohammed. Hey, Muhammad. Um, so for the homework, um, uh, you faded away. Speak into your microphone, Muhammad, so I can hear you. Okay. Uh, on our homework, which is due on September 4. Yes. So on the blackboard, it says the problem 8 is due, but on the schedule, it says problem 9. So which one are we doing? <laughs> uh, I don't know, Muhammad, but I'm going to look and see here. It says uh, problem nine here. Yeah. But on the blackboard, it says problem eight. Oh, it does? Yes. Hmm. Okay, well, let, let me look and see what, what those problems are, Mohammed, in the book. And um, I, I want you to do nine, Mohammed. Okay. Thank you for asking. The, the, the homework problem, uh, I want you to do 2-9. Now, uh, that's on page 79. And Mohammed says, uh, that the blackboard says 2-8, so there's a mistake there. Now, now let me see when that's when that's due. Hang on. 2-9 is due 2-9. Um, trying to find it here. Well, uh, No, 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 I want you, no, I want you to do 2, 8. Yeah, it is 2, 8, Mohammed. I'm sorry to confuse everybody. Uh, but, but when is that due is the question. Let, let me see if I can figure that out. It's, it's due tomorrow. Tomorrow night. Tomorrow night? Yeah. Uh, yeah, you're right. You're right. It it's due the uh, fourth. That's that's tomorrow night, isn't it? It, it? Does it say eight on the blackboard? Yes, eight on the blackboard. Yeah, that's what I want. I, I wanted a two eight. Good. Let me see what I've done here. Okay. Uh, I 
All right, thank thank you, fellows, uh, and, and we're, we're squared away, we hope, on that. Anybody else, comment or question on anything? Okay, well, <clears throat> I need to put that on, I need to put that on the uh, announcements too. Uh, to, to eight, page 79, do the fourth, and this one is do uh, the sixth. Okay, we'll, we'll sort that out. Okay, now, now, now to our topic. We're studying strain, and I want to show you why strain is so important. It's uh, in chapter three, when we get to that, you'll, uh, you'll learn Hooke's Law. It goes like this. Uh, it goes like this. The stress is equal to a constant times the strain. Remember, I've told you that the stress is the all important item in this class. And this, this thing here is called the uh, modulus of elasticity. So you can, if you can find the strain and you know the modulus of elasticity, you can find the stress. Like for instance, for uh, steel, if you go in the back flap of your book, the modulus of elasticity for steel is, uh, for structural steel, it's 200 gigapascals. Now this is for structural steel. It's 200 giga pascals. Giga is 10 to the ninth. And so if you knew the strain, let's suppose you, you did a problem and we're, we're gonna do some problems here with strain in a minute. You did a problem and you came up with this here Strain is very small, usually a very small number, and it's dimensionless. Suppose you got a strain like that, and if you multiplied that by your modulus of elasticity, is the fancy name for that, here's what you would get. Uh, let, let me do this on my calculator. I, I'm trying to show you why uh, why strain is so important. See that, that little thing there stands for strain. That, that's normal strain. Okay, I'm going to do that. Here goes. 200 e to the ninth times 0 0.00015. Here's what I'm getting. I'm getting 30 30 mega Pascal. That would be the stress. Now for steel, it turns out that uh, steel doesn't yield till you get to 250 mega Pascal. So, so we're nowhere near yielding. And we'll talk about yielding in the next chapter. I'm just showing you how important strain is. You can find the stress from the strain. Now, the other way to find stress that we've studied in chapter uh, one, I guess it was, was it chapter, yeah, is you take the normal force and, and you divide by the area and, and you get your, uh, you get your stress that way. There's two avenues to obtaining stress. 
See, this is stress. Well, this is normal stress. And, and remember what that normal force is. That's a, it's not an external force. It's an internal force. There, there are four kinds of internal reactions. Remember, there's the normal force, the shear force, torque and bending moment. And there's, there's equations that we're going to study in this course. If you know what those internal loads are, you can get the stress from the internal load. There's two ways to get stress. Here, let me write it for you. Yeah, now here's an announcement. I'll try to put that on, uh, on the announcements there for you. But, but there's two ways to obtain stress. One way is to find the internal loads. Once you get the internal loads, you can find out what the stress is. We, ha we have ways of doing that. Of course, you know there's two kinds of stress, normal stress and shear stress. Some people call bending stress, but it's, it's a form of normal stress. And uh, bearing stress, but it's a form of normal stress. But, but the other way of finding the uh, stress is to, is to find the uh, strain. If you can find the strain, then you can use uh, Hooke's Law and you can get the stress from the strain. There's two ways to find stress. You can find the internal loads and get it, or you can find the strain and get it. Any comments or questions on that? Okay. Well, I, I will put these two items on the uh, announcements. Uh, I think I wrote the, I think I wrote 281. There is no problem 81. Mohammed helped me on that. And there was a question about whether it was problem 28 or 29. And I, I think I want 28. Yeah. Okay. It was Ben Seaman. I'm sorry, please. It was it was Ben Seaman who helped you on the problem. Thank you. Page yeah, ben. Problem. yeah, Ben. Yeah, he helped me on that one. Good going. Okay, well, uh, let's get rid of all that. We're okay now. And we're going to talk about uh, uh, strength. Okay. Uh, first, though, <clears throat> I ran out of time last time. There's a couple of mathematical things that I want to show you. My guess is you already know these things, but uh, in case you didn't, it never hurts to go over stuff. And this is a mathematical thing dealing with small angles. Now, now how small? Well, uh, definitely uh, one degree or, or smaller. That, that's a pretty small angle, wouldn't you say? One degree? Very small. And here's what I'm trying to tell you, that the tangent of a very small angle, if theta is a very small angle, around one degree, and maybe it could be a little bigger, it could be even two degrees, and it's still, this will still work. 
the, the tangent of theta is equal to the sine of theta is equal to theta. Now the catch is this has got to be in radians. Now these don't. They can be in radians or uh, degrees. But this must be in radians. Now let me show you an example. Hopefully you, you guys all are already know that, but just in case, uh, let's go through it. Let's suppose you wanted to do uh, one degree. All right, well, let's see, one degree. Let me, let me get that in radians. Now, now the way to get that in radians is you multiply by, uh, got one degree now multiply by pi, divide by 180 degrees. See the degrees cancel, and pi is in radians. So you're going to get radians. So let me see what that is, just a minute. I'm getting uh, 0.017 blah, 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 goes on forever. And that's in radians. Now, now let's get the tangent of one degree and see what it is. Here we go. The tangent of one degree is, I'm going to put that in my calculator now. There's one degree, and here's the tangent of it. Okay, one degree. Ten, okay, here we go. Tangent of one degree, my calculator says it's 0 0.01745 something. Hey, you know what? Comes out pretty much the same, doesn't it? Uh, a little bit of difference. I think mine says 055, and this says, mine says 17455. This says 17453, but hey, pretty dang close. Now, now let's do the sine of one degree and see what that says. On my calculator, the sine of one degree is uh, 0 0.017452, blah, blah, blah. Gee, uh, that comes up pretty dang close, too. Look at that. 0 0.017452, 0 0.017453. Hey, this works. Now you could have these in radians, but it, but if you do, you're going to have to uh, put your calculator in radians. Now let's see. Can I do that? Let me see if I know how to do that. Uh, to get it in radians, yeah, there we go. Uh, if you put if you put the tangent of 0 0.017453, now those are radians, in your calculator, but, but you would have to be in radian mode. See, uh, I'm going to, I have it in radian mode. Now I'm going to push tangent and see what happens. Here it goes. Well, boy, boy, Jove, I'm getting 0 0.017454. It came out dang, dang close. Look at that. So these can be in degrees or radians, but this has got to be in radians. And you can do the same thing with the sine of 0.017453. Uh, let me see what I get when I do that. 0 0.017453. I push the sign button. And here's what I get. 0 0.017452. Hey, that, that's pretty dang close to 0 0.017453. In other words, what I'm telling you here seems to work pretty darn good. For one degree, I think it would work for uh, maybe two degrees. Here, let's try two degrees. 
Any question on that so far? We're going over some some mathematical things that we we need to know. Any comment or question? Okay. Well, here. Let's do one more of these. This is kind of fun. We're talking about small angles. Suppose you had two degrees. Uh, here, here. Let's let's make it one point seven five degrees, just to to be weird about it. Okay. First thing I want you to do is I want you to convert this to radians. I want to know what that is in radians, and I will be quiet for. Uh, one minute. Go ahead. Can you convert that to radians? Go ahead. I'll call on one of you. Okay, uh, let me find one of my best, very, very best students here. How about my friend Nicholas? Unmute Nicholas, if, if you're with us, and tell us how many radians uh, 1.75 degrees is. Uh, 0 0.0305. That's what I got. So say it again, Nicholas. 0 0.0305. Yeah, that's what I got. I got point zero three zero five four now that's enough now see the units are just nothings R radians don't have units like meters or now, now some books will go millimeters per millimeter you, you might see that but they're really dimensionless okay great now, now I want you to do the tangent of uh, 1.75 degrees. You guys put that in your calculator and let's see what happens. Well, I did that and here's, here's what I got. I got 0 0.03055. Hey, that's, that's almost the same, isn't it? because 1.75 is what I call a small angle. All right, let's do one more. Find the sine of 1.75 degrees and, and tell me uh, what you get. Boing, boing, two. I'm getting 0 0.030 five four man right on the money how about that so we've learned a, a wonderful lesson here in some mathematics <clears throat> any comments or questions before we move on okay what we learned is well you already knew this i hope is that for small angles Really, two degrees or less will, will work awfully good. Uh, the tangent of the uh, angle is equal to the sine of the angle is equal to the angle itself. But now there's a catch. This must be in radians. OK. One more, one more little math thing, and then we'll work some uh, strain problems. All right. And, and you'll see this uh, thing we're talking about show up. <clears throat> now, this other thing is the arc length equation. I use this all the time. But just in case, 
you're rusty. Uh, we're going to go over it just in case. And here's here's how it goes. I know you've all seen that. S equals R theta. It's the arc length equation. But what it is is S is an arc length. If you have a circle, and you have a radius R, And let me put another radius in here like, like that. And you have an angle theta. This is called the arc length. It's the distance s. And it's equal to r times theta. But there's a catch. This equation only works if uh, theta is in radians. It's got to be in radians or it doesn't work. Like for instance, if you wanted the distance, uh, the entire distance all the way around the circle, they call that the circumference. So it'd be r times 2 pi because there's, you know, there's two pi radians in a circle. Well, that's our old circumference of a circle equation that you've memorized since uh, grade school. Circumference of a circle is two pi r. You knew that. Okay, well, great. So here, let's do an example of the arc length equation. Uh, so suppose you had a suppose you had a distance of two point five meters. Well, of course, that would be uh, really longer than this whiteboard, two point five meters. And, and suppose you had a little distance here of we'll just make something up. S say that's three centimeters. Okay, you've got a very small angle here. There we go. A little bit wavy there. Didn't mean to make it so dang wavy. But we tried. <clears throat> now you can get that little angle from this arc length equation. See, you could, you could think of this as an arc length. And a great big circle. This is part of a, this could be the radius. And so, so this, uh, this angle here, do a little math with me. That angle in radians now would equal to the three centimeters divided by the, now this is in meters here, divided by the 2.5 meters. You can get that little small angle. Now, here's a problem. You can't divide centimeters by meters. You've got to make, you can either have meters divided by meters or centimeters divided by meters. Okay, so here's what we're going to do. We're going to write this as 0 0.03 meters divided by 2.5 meters. All right, now do that with me and let's see what we get. 0.03 divided by 2.5. Did you get 0 0.012 nothings? Yes. Yay! Th those are radians. Those nothings are radians. Radians don't have dimensions. So <clears throat> we now know that this angle is point, that little bitty angle down there is 0.012 uh, radians. Now let's get the degrees. Now how, how would you get degrees? Well, you take the 0.012 radians 
and, and you multiply by 180 over pi uh, radians. The radians cancel. And here's what you'll get. I'm getting 0.68755 degrees. That little bitty angle down there is 0.68755 degrees. Well, so what? Well, uh, <clears throat> it's such a small angle. It's definitely smaller than two degrees. I mean, 0.68 is, is smaller than one degree. If, if you wanted to take the tangent of that 0 0.6875 degrees, we know that that will equal the sine of 0 0.6875 degrees. And we know that that will equal to uh, the angle in radians, uh, which is 0.012. I'm just using this uh, formula that we, we talked about up here. Tangent is equal to the sine, is equal to the angle itself, but the angle has to be in radians. Now, now check that out and see if I'm lying to you. Put 0.6875 in your calculator, okay, and hit the tangent button. Does it say 0.012? My, my joke, mine does. Put 0.6875 in your calculator and hit the sign button. Does it say 0.012? Well, actually, mine says 0.011999, some numbers. But that's awfully close to 0.012, isn't it? Professor? Oh, good deal. Go ahead. Uh, shouldn't we have multiplied by pi over 180, not 180 over pi? Uh, we have radians. Now, if you want to get degrees, you have to multiply by degrees over pi, radians. See, the radians cancel. Oh, uh, okay. If you put radians, over degrees, you'd have radians times radians. We don't want that. Gotcha. Okay, so it's reverse of the uh, the way you find the radians. That makes sense. Yes. Now, now, who was that? Uh, this is Ben Harris. Yeah. Thank you, Ben. Yeah. Uh, I do this all the time, and and what we what we're trying to do, Ben, is we're trying to cancel out some stuff that's in the numerator and the denominator. And if you have the radians in, if you have radians here in the numerator, you're going to have radians times radians. We don't want that. Now, the reason why all this is important <clears throat> is because normal strain, I gave you the definition of it. It's really the definition. It's Delta over L. Now, now the book, the book has a more refined definition. Their book goes like this. This is the book's definition of normal strain. But it's equal to this. You can put a three lines there too, if you like, for a definition. It's equal to deformation over L. Now, L would be this. There's your L. You see the 2.5 <coughs> meters. And the deformation D, that, that's this. Uh, that's the Greek letter <coughs> delta. See, that's the <coughs> Greek letter delta. This is lowercase. See, the uppercase delta. You all, you all know and love the uppercase delta. It's that triangle thing. But see, that little, that's the little lowercase delta in Greek. And it, stand, it stands for deformation. OK, well, that's enough math there. 
Uh, but we're going to need that. So now let's let's work some strain problems. Unless there's a comment or question. And now you know that there's two different ways of finding uh, stress. We'll just check on you guys. I'm, I'll pick on somebody and do not get embarrassed. Because see, uh, I need to find out if, if, if you guys listen to me. Uh, let me pick on my friend Ashley. Ashley's a good sport. Ashley, unmute and tell me the, the two different methods for finding stress. Go ahead, Ashley. Uh-oh, coffee break. I might, I might have lost Ashley for a minute. Uh, I don't know, shear stress and normal stress? Uh, there, yeah, there's two kinds of stress, uh, Ashley. Here, let me let me write this just a minute. Now, Ashley's 100% right. There are two kinds. There are two kinds of stress. There are there's normal stress and shear stress. The normal stress. Now, now, what I'm asking, Ashley, is there are two methods. And if you don't, if you've forgotten, it's okay. To find the internal loads and then find the strain. That's it. That's it. The, the way you find these, either one, is you find the internal loads. And from them, you can find the stress. But the other way is you find uh, the uh, strain. Now, now there's two kinds of strain. See, there's this kind and that kind. This is normal strain, that's shear strain. <clears throat> and what's weird is uh, they both have the same formula. It's just that she she did good. She, she listened and she knew what what the two ways of finding the, the two methods of finding to, to find stress. The two methods are one, you get the internal loads. And there's four kinds of internal loads. The other method is you find the strain. Now there's two kinds of strain. And, and so you can go either route to get the stress, which is all important. Okay, well, good. I, I like to know that my students are, are listening to me. Okay, let's work uh, some, some strain problems now. Uh, let's see, the first one I'd like to work is, uh, this is F25. F25, okay. Let me find it here. Just a minute, I gotta shop around here. F25, I don't know where it is, but I'll find it here in a minute. Uh, there it is. I found it. It happens to be in my book on page 77. Okay, we've got a square. Now you guys know the rules for uh, successfully doing problems. You want to uh, make a diagram. I'm looking for a sketch, a diagram, and you want to try to make it to scale. Now, what is this 300 uh, millimeters square? Okay. All right, well, I'm going to make a square. Here it goes. Uh, why don't I make it? Uh, I can make it any way I want here. Uh, 
All right, I made it five, I made it five inches is what I did. Mr. Griffin? But now, now that's just a scale. This is 300 millimeters. And I'm drawing my diagram now. Come on now. Ta -da, and there we go. I, I made a uh, square, 300 millimeters square. We're doing F2-5 on page 77. <clears throat> uh, Mr. Griffin? Yeah. Um, I think we did this problem yesterday. Do you, are we doing it again? Oh, oh, thank you so much. You know what? We don't want to do that one again. No, 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 no. Thank you so much. I want to do a different one. I want to do a different one. Uh, <clears throat> tell you what, though, let's do one uh, similar. Yeah. Yeah, we could we could do one similar. I, I don't want to do that. One. No, no. I've forgotten that we did that. Are you? Mohammed, are you sure we did that yesterday or when or Tuesday? Yes, sir. It's in my notes, so I know that's right. Man, I I trust you. I trust you. Thank you so much. Let's let's don't do that. We did it. And if you if you want to see it done, uh, pull up the uh, YouTube video for uh, what would it be? The first of September. Is today the third? Yeah. Just pull up the first and then you can watch it all over again. Okay, good. Okay, we're going to do a different one. Now, Mohammed, I, I want to do 227. Did we do it? I hope not. Uh, ch check on that. Make sure, make sure that, we, uh, that we didn't do that. Yeah, we didn't do that. Good. Well, I want to do that. Now, now this one is uh, this one's a little different, but we're going to do it. Here it goes. <clears throat> now they've got a square, but they've got it. Uh, they've got it kind of oriented a little differently here. Tell you what I'm going to do here. I'm going to. Uh, I'm going to actually measure a 45 degree angle. I'd like I'd like this thing to be like it's supposed to be. I'm going to measure a 45 degree angle, which puts me right here. Yeah, there we go. And we, we want a square again. So here it goes. I'm making a square now. Hmm. There we go. Great. Uh, let's get some uh, 90 degree angles here. Get a protractor so you can do this stuff. So it'll it'll be pretty close to that to be accurate. That'd be nice. Uh, how long did I make that other one? Uh, I made it uh, about that long, didn't I? Yeah. Well, let's make this one that long. Okay. That'll work. Come on now. What's the deal here? I'm in trouble. There we go. That's pretty good. Uh, let me make a 90 here. Okay. 
Uh, I'm going to make a 90 degree angle here. Yeah, all right. Yeah, foolproof plan here. And we're going to make a square again. Come on now, behave. There you ah. Everything shifted somehow. I'm not supposed to do that. Yeah, that's pretty good. And now I'll connect these. And boy, boy, Joe, it's pretty dang close. Pretty dang close. All right. Well, I tried to make that. Uh, Well, the thing is, though, they said that this was 12 inches here, and this is, this is 12 inches here. Okay. And so there would be 12 inches here and 12 inches there, and there's another, there's another 12 inches here. And the 12 inches here. Okay, and of course it'd be 12 inches, 12 inches. 12 inches and 12 inches. All right, we're, we're doing problem 227. It's on page um, 82. They want to know. Uh, the normal uh, strains along AB and AC and BD. Well, I better label these. Now that's ABCD. Okay. <clears throat> now here's what they've done. They've deformed this. They put it under stress and they've deformed this down how much? Uh, a half an inch. Okay. And they've, they've, they've deformed this uh, three tenths of an inch. Okay. Yeah, there we go. Well, I'm going to color that a different color. Here it goes. Just a minute. Let me get my. Uh... I had some green here. What happened? Yeah, here we go. Here's some green. All right, they're going to deform this and it's going to go from here to here now. And it's going to go from here to there. See, they're, they're deforming it. They put some uh, external loads on it. Uh, I tried. And then and this one here, it's going to deform like this. And this one here will have a new shape here. See that new uh, <clears throat> new green? It's not a square anymore. It used to be a square. It's not a uh, parallelogram either. It's just a quadrilateral, I guess you'd call it. But but there's a little tiny distance here that it's stretched. It's 0. 0.3 inches, <clears throat> according to them. And there's a little tiny distance here that it's compressed. Uh, I believe it's 0. 0.5 inches. Read it. Did I get that right? Yeah, that's that's right. 
Now they want to know the uh, normal strain along AB. Well, let's do that. Well, the normal strain along AB is equal to the deformation of AB times AB. Well, how long is AB? Well, uh, originally it was, uh, you could write it like this. You, you could do it like that, that'd be fine. Uh, let me see what that is. You guys double check me now. Did you get uh, 16.970 blah, blah, blah? Yeah. Good. I heard it, yeah. Good deal. Well, we got AB. Let's circle it. There we go. But now the deformation, uh, I think maybe it's a little longer, but it might be shorter. I can't tell. See, I guess I guess what I'm talking about here is well, what are we going to call that? A prime, maybe. And see, this would be B prime. Originally, A and B were were black, and now we made them green. But here's what I think. I think you would have to go uh, make yourself a. a triangle in here. Come in here. Make yourself a triangle. And you take the final distance, which will be, uh, I think it's 11 and a half squared from here to here, because you have to subtract a half an inch. And this would be 12.3 squared. That's the new link. That's your new A prime B prime. That, that's A prime B prime. But then see you have to subtract your AB. We, we know what AB is. It's uh, 16 point blah 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 blah. And then see you divide by your a, B, your original length. See, this will give us our deformation, our, our new length minus our old length. Did that make a lick of sense to anybody? This, this should give you the strain along A, B. Let, let's see what it is. Here goes. <clears throat> I'm plugging this in now. Well, I got an answer. I'm getting this A prime B prime to be uh, 16.8 three eight six five. You know what? It got shorter. The green A prime B prime is a little bit shorter than the original A B. How about that? I couldn't tell by looking at it. Okay, now uh, subtract that and divide by that and let's get our strain. Here it goes. Subtract 16.97056 and then divide by 16.97056. Okay, I did that. I got my, my strain along side AB is a negative. What does that mean? Hope you can read my writing. It's dimensionless. It's negative. That means it got shorter. 
it compressed a little bit. Not much, but it did. And we think we know the strain on AB. We did that. Uh, just out of curiosity, uh, let's look up the answer and see if that's what they got. They have answers. This is 227. Go to the back of the book. Look up 227. And they said the strain along AB, this is what the book says. They said the strain along AB is negative 7.77 times 10 to the minus third. Uh, they reported as inches per inch. Now they don't do brackets like I do, but that's that's what they're talking about. But see that that's dimensionless. Inches over inches is dimensionless. And you know what? I think we got what they got. It's the same thing, isn't it? Yay, we did good. We we got the book answer for the strain along A B. So far, so good. Any questions on that? I use Pythagorean theorem. Go ahead. Uh, just a quick question. Um, so for those length of 11.5 and 12.3? Yes. For the, 11, for the length of 11.5 in the linear deformation, we started from the new triangle or from the top of the original triangle? What, what I did, Mohammed, is it, it, I made a triangle here, and I went from here to here. Oh, to the it, new one, not to the original yeah, one. Yeah, the new one. The new okay. one. And, and then from mm -hmm. here to here. To till the end, not to the. Okay. Got it. How about anybody else? Anybody else? Okay, well, if, if you're all if you're all happy with that. Now now guys, this is tedious and boring but if there's a lot of things in life that are tedious and boring like uh, doing the dishes maybe I don't know what's tedious and boring for you I actually enjoy doing dishes it's really not tedious and boring for me but uh, there's probably some things for you that are tedious and boring and this is kind of that way but we can do it all right. Well, let's uh, let's do the rest of it now. They wanted something else. Um, they want the normal strain along diagonal AC. Let's do that. Now, now see, AC goes from here all the way to C. Need a little room here. If you're happy, I could erase that, and that that give me lots of room to work. Let me do that. Better speak up because I'm going to erase this. But hey, it's on video. It's on uh, YouTube. You could you could watch it over again. That is, if my IT person uh, puts it on, posts it on video, she will. She's pretty faithful. And now what we're doing right now is we're finding the strain, the normal strain on uh, AC. And see, that's a diagonal. That goes from A to C. And, and you know what strain is? It's deformation over length. Okay. Well, what's the deformation? Well, see, if that's 0. 0.5 and that's 0. 0.5, I think you've got a deformation of one inch. Now, what's the length? Well, if that's 12 inches and that's 12, you know what? I think that's 24 inches. Well, that's easy. I think that's it. Let's do that. Here goes. Uh, one divided by 24 is 0.041 blah, blah, blah. Nothings. Strain is dimensionless. Well, let's see what the answer book got. 
They said the strain on AC is, uh, this is what the book got, negative 0.0417. And they said inches per inches, which is, which is fine. If you want to report inches over inches, uh, that's fine with me. Hey, that's, that's what we got. They, they just rounded off. So we did great. Okay, uh, what else do they want to know? Uh, the normal strain along diagonals BD. Well, let's do that. They, they want the normal strain along the diagonal BD. Well, you know what that is, it's delta over L. Okay. Well, what's delta? Uh, well, now we're talking about BD now. You know what? I think the delta is 0.6 inches because you gain 0.3 here and 0.3 there. And the L is, uh, well, it's 24 inches again. Okay, let's do that. 0.6 divided by 24. I'm getting 0.025 nothings. We, we just found the normal strain on BD. Now let's see what the book says. Answer book says 227 um, positive 0.025. The book says 0.025. Only they, they like that inches per inches thing that keeps them happy. Hey, we got what they got. We're doing great. Okay, good. Uh, so what? Well, uh, Let's do something different. Let's find the strain, uh, the shear strain. Now, now they didn't ask for that. Why, why don't we do it at D? Uh, but before I do that, any last comments or questions? I need this room to, to do the shear strain. I'm gonna erase all that if it's okay. Any comments or questions? We're gonna do shear strain. Okay, nobody said anything. I'm going to erase this now. We're going to do the shear strain. You sure, you sure you're okay with that? It's pretty easy, really, wasn't it? That wasn't too bad. Okay, now we're going to do uh, the shear strain. Now, the, the shear strain... Now, they didn't ask for that, so we... We can't go to the back of the book and get the answer for shear strain and check our work on this because they don't, they didn't do it. So you, I guess uh, you're just going to have to trust me that uh, we know what we're doing. With your help, we can do this. Now the symbol is this funny looking uh, Greek letter gamma. Kind of looks like that. Alpha, beta, gamma, delta, epsilon. Yeah, it's the it's the third letter of the Greek alphabet, and and it's equal to delta over L. Hmm. Well, okay. Delta over L. But see, the perpendicular is the thing. The perpendicular. Now, in this case here. Sometimes it's easy to use this formula. They have to be perpendicular. But it's easier to use this formula here. They amount to the same thing. I showed you guys that. See, we're going to do it at D. We could do it any place, but I was, thought we'd just do it at D. I showed you guys that these two formulas give you the same, they give you the same thing. But we definitely will find it easier to work with this one. Now, what this theta is, 
Here, I'll put it in green. I don't know if you can really see green very good, but green, that's the theta. It, it's, the, it's the green angle between those green It's the angle between those two, what they call rays, I guess. An angle is made of two rays, right there. Okay. If we can just get that angle, now it's got to be in radians. See, pi over two is in radians. This state has got to be in radians. Well, we can get it. Again, uh, you can make yourself a triangle. I could have used that triangle there, and I could have used B instead of D, but that's okay. You just come over here with me and make this triangle. And I think that one half of the angle we want is equal to the arc tangent of 11 point, no, 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 it's, it's half of 11.5. Uh, I can't do that in my head. What's half of 11.5? It's 5.75. See, see this distance here, I think is 5.75. Now I need this distance here. You know what that is? That's half of 12.6. Uh, I should be able to divide that by two at uh, 6.3. Now these, these are inches. But now that, that's just going to give me half of the theta I want because see, the theta I want is this whole thing and I'm just getting half of it. You understand? I, I'm, I'm taking the arc tangent of a half of that angle. Okay. Well, if you understand, I'm going to do it now. Here it goes. 5.75 5 divided by 6.3 arc tangent. Well, I got it. Uh, I got half of the angle I want is 42.38 blah, 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 blah. So we can get our theta now, just multiply by two. I'm gonna do that now. And I'm getting 84.773 uh, something degrees. Great, we did great. See, it's not 90. Do you understand, it used to be 90. We used to have a square, but because they've deformed this thing, that angle is not 90 anymore. It's 84.773. But to use this equation, this has got to be in radians. So we have to convert it. We can do that. You multiply by pi radians. You divide by 180. And we're going to get our radians now. Here we go. Multiply by pi divided by 180. I'm getting 1.4795 blah, 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 radians. Okay. Now we're going to find our shear strain. This, that little thing there is called shear strain. And, and from that, you can get shear stress. Remember earlier, the very beginning, I told you that uh, normal stress is equal to this modulus of elasticity times normal strain. Well, see, shear stress is equal to the modulus of rigidity times shear strain. Th these are forms of Hooke's law. You can get the stresses from the strains. Okay, well, here goes. We got pi over 2 minus 1.479, blah, 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 blah. 
All right, I'm going to do that now. I'm plugging that in and I'm going to get the shear strain. Okay, I got it. Uh, unless I goofed up, I'm getting the shear strain is uh, 0 0.09122. Double check, man. If I'm wrong, please speak up. We think we think we have the shear strain at, at D. Anybody else get that? And we can't check it in the back because they didn't ask us to do, ask us to do that. Yes, I got the same. Say, say that again, please. Yes, I got the same. Yay, I think we did that right. We got two of us. Excellent. Well, uh, we might have time for one more. Let's, let's try another one. Let me repeat something I've told you before. If this new angle here is acute, you all know what acute means. It just means less than 90. If, if that new angle is acute, and it is, it's 84 degrees, isn't it? Then your shear strain will be positive. If the new angle is obtuse, then the shear strain will be negative. Uh, let, let's just do that. Let's find the shear strain at A. You want to? That'd be fun because, see, it's going to be obtuse. Okay. Well, we're going to find this angle here at A now. Here, let me draw it. This will be about the last thing we can do together today. And I'll put an announcement on Blackboard about your homework. Uh, if we can get that, we could get the shear strain at A. Okay, here, let me, uh, I just need a little room in here someplace. All right, we're gonna find the shear strain at A. We know it's equal to pi over two minus Theta. Now the theta we're talking about is this green theta up there. That's what we're talking about. Well, you know, we, we already got this angle here, that half theta down there. It was 84.773, and we have a triangle. So that theta there, wouldn't it just be uh, subtract that from 180? Right? Angles in a triangle add up to 180. So you take 180 and you subtract uh, 84.773. I think that theta is equal to 95.227 degrees. This, this, you see this angle here? It's bigger than 90. See, it used to be 90 because it was a square. But because they've deformed this thing, that angle's bigger than 90. It's 95. Ah, but this has got to be in radians to, to work. Okay. So to convert that, you multiply by pi, you divide by 180, and here's what I get. I get 1.6620, blah, 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 blah. Okay, we're going to take that and we're going to, we know what it is now. We're going to put it in here, subtract it from pi over 2, and we will get our shear strain at uh, A. Okay, go for it. I got a negative 
point zero nine one two uh two something hey you know what it's it came out the same number how about that but this number is positive because this angle is acute but this came out negative but that angle is obtuse so we have just found the uh, shear strain at A. Okay, well, that, that was fun. Uh, any questions on that? Okay, well, uh, now we, this class, we don't meet on Monday. But if you do have a class that meets on Monday, uh, go to the lake, go swimming or something, because Monday is Labor Day and there won't be any classes. It's a holiday. But now we don't get a holiday. We, we'll meet next Tuesday and we'll have more fun doing, uh, I think we're still stuck on this stuff about strain. I don't know. Let me look and see here. Uh, on uh, Tuesday, that would be uh, September 8th. Yeah, yeah, we're, we're, we're still doing strain. But we're coming up on a, uh, an exam. Now, this says exam three over unit one. That's a screw up. It's exam one over unit one. Uh, that'll be available to you on the 15th and due on the 18th. But that's a couple of weeks away. Don't worry about it. Don't start studying yet. Well, we covered pretty much what I wanted to cover today. Any last uh, comments or questions from anybody? I'm listening. Go ahead. Uh, do you know how you to get that 6.3 inch in that arc tan? Uh, just a minute now, the 6.3 inch. Uh, yeah, under 5.75. Uh, 6. 5. Oh, yeah. See, uh, it, it was originally 24 inches from A to C. But you moved a half an inch down, and this moved a half an inch up. That's a one whole inch. And if you have 24 inches, and you, you, you shorten it by one inch, you have 23 inches. Now, if you want half of 23 inches, that's how much? Uh, what's half of 23? Is it 11.5? Did I do that right? Yes. Is that what you asked, 11.5? No, actually, I'm, I was asking, where did you get the 6.3 inch? Oh, OK, yeah. Oh, but you also wanted the 5.75, didn't you? Yes, yes. Well, you see what that is? It's 11.5 from A prime to C prime. And half of that, what's half of 11.5? Is that 5 point? Is it 5.75? I believe it is. I think this, this distance here is 5.75. Two of them make 11.5, right? Yeah. I thought no, from but, A prime no, no, to B you're, you're prime, asking, it was I'm 23 sorry, go ahead. inches. Oh, sorry, huh? this is Alex. Um, I thought it was from A prime to B prime, it was 23 inches because it's the 24 minus the one. Uh, well, if you go from A prime to C, let's call this Alex, let's call this C prime, okay? From A prime to C prime <clears throat> would be 24 inches, it'd be 23 inches, wouldn't it? Because see, you go down half an inch here, you go up half an inch here. You did have 24 inches. Yeah. So if you take an inch off, you'll have 23 inches from, from is there room to write here? Uh, a prime, B prime should be 23. You okay with 23 inches, Alex? Correct. All right. Uh, okay, now did I goof up? I think I goofed up. 
Because I thought when like you do the arc tangent, um, half yeah. of it would just be 23 divided by two, but instead we did, um, I think it was like 11.5 divided by two. Yeah, the, yeah. Th this distance here is half of that, which is 11.5. Why, why did I put 5.75? That's not right. Because I think you thought the total was uh, 12 inches instead of the original 24. Oh, I think I, oh no. Oh no, I goofed up. This, this distance here is uh, 11.5. And now what's, what's this distance here? Let's see if I can do that right. That's 24 plus, uh, it's 24.6. Does this show up? 24. 0.6 is the distance from, uh, what, what do you want to call it, D prime to, to B prime? Can I write over? Yeah. So that's B prime D prime. Is from, from B, call it B prime is the green B, and D prime is the green D, and it should be 24.6, right? Yeah. And so this distance is 12.3, uh, 12.3. And so this angle here is 11.5 uh, divided by 12.3. Uh, and the arctangent is 4307. Somehow I goofed this up, guys. Didn't I? Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, and you guys, you guys caught it, but it, it's too late. We're, we're, we, uh, I told you this is tedious and, and a little bit boring, but we we can do it if you don't put down the wrong numbers. I think I did. Well, good luck. Uh, our time is up. It's sad. I'm going to have to say goodbye to you. But I will see you next Tuesday, right? Right. Next Tuesday. And uh, at least we got the normal uh, strains right. But I think I goofed up on the shear strains. I think I wrote down uh, the wrong numbers. OK, well, we'll, we'll do our best. Bye-bye for now. See you soon. Bye. See you.